um, are just working really hard on their project. And uh, before they get started, I want to say that they should support Judge Pat. So I'm going to let her come up here and tell you a little bit about herself before we get started. Hi. Um, my name is Jennifer Kratz. I actually have two students that are here at Cactus Ranch. Uh, one is in fourth grade now, and the other is in second grade. Um, I'm actually a, a do I have a doctorate in chemistry, so I suppose I could make everybody call me Dr. Pratt. But um, unless you're a professor, <laughs> most people at a normal industry setting don't bother with that too much. So uh, I'm just not used to it. I don't worry about it. But um, so I, I'm a chemist. Do, do any of you guys know what chemists do? They work with chemistry. They work with chemistry. They do. Yeah. So actually, I do new product development at 3M. And um, the problem that I work on is um, when metal rusts, um, depending on what that metal is for, that's not a good thing. And so um, I actually develop coatings that we put on the outside of the pipelines that carry oil and gas. I don't know if you guys watch the news much, but occasionally you might hear about a pipeline bursting and big explosions and things like that. So the coatings that I develop are put on pipelines to protect them from corrosion so that that won't happen, hopefully. So that's what I do, and I'm excited to listen to you guys' presentations. Okay, we're ready for our first group. Recyclables they claim. By Ava Crawford, Kelsey Fubala, Nathan Lewis, and Mercer McCaster. The recyclables are on the way. Before we get started, we have a short video on how styrofoam is made. Just let them, I guess we're just going to let them watch it and then you guys can tell them what it's about. <laughs> Some of it we'll use back in our own process, and what we can't use we'll send to Timbron. And Timbron is the recycler? Yes, that's correct. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan, thank you for your tour. Oh, it's nice learned a lot. So the volume didn't work all the way out, but the first half of the video showed you this light material that basically you can feel the air going through it, which is what the styrofoam is made of. And as you saw the bag labeled reject, um, they put into a bag and they put some of it and reused it. 
where they said that they recycled some of it, but it was most likely being downcycled, which is where it's taken to another country and is dumped on a mountain or in other people's backyards. Why we should. Styrofoam is a big problem for the Earth today, today because it is non-recyclable. But um, and it is a big problem for our love. And it's filling up our landfills. Um, we can change all that by using waxless cardboard cups. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that some cardboard cups have wax to insulate? However, the wax causes <coughs> these cups to be non-recyclable. Landfills. There's too much styrofoam being used in Round Rock, so we plan to cut down the use of styrofoam at local restaurants and cafes across Round Rock. Waxless cardboard paper cups are also recyclable. What will come out of the landfills? 65% is um, the future without our idea in, this, in the landfills. 20% is if we don't switch from not. If we don't, if we stop using styrofoam, eleven percent is with now with more garbage, or if we have more garbage, and four percent is now. Adding recycling bins. We want local restaurants to add more recycling bins, so people will be able to easily recycle these waxes cardboard cups. Adding more recycling bins will make a cleaner city and a cleaner environment. Why are people still using styrofoam? Because it's very cheap and people in the business world do not want to spare any expense. How to put the plan in action. One, schedule a meeting with local Round Rock restaurant owners. Two, advertise our cardboard cups and paper-based ads. Um, what happens if they disagree? We will persuade the restaurant owners that our idea is the best one and that and that it will make our environment a cleaner and better place to live. Did you know? Koi already uses waxless cardboard cuts, and Starbucks also uses cards. We hope you choose the right way to go to make a better environment for Round Rock. Any questions? We can, <laughs> any questions? We we will be del delighted to answer them. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching. Do I still get to ask the question? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was waiting to see if anybody else <laughs> asked the question. Um, did you guys do any research to see what energy and how much it actually costs and affects the environment to make the paper cups? No, but we will research that. <laughs> some, yeah, sometimes we come up with solutions that are actually Worse. Okay. So I was just okay. <laughs> just a thought to All around Round Rock, fast food restaurants such as McDonald's or Whataburger produce those uh, uh, styrofoam cups to insulate people's drinks. Styrofoam is made out of polystyrene, also known as a kind of plastic. But what customers don't know is that there can be a more eco friendly substitute. If we continue to use styrofoam, then landfills will continue to grow and we will eventually run out of plastic resources. The answer to this dilemma is a new type of cup used no matter takeout or dining. This flower is saying help because um, if we continue, if landfills continue to grow, then um, they'll have to use more spaces and plants and animals lost the room. That cup should be made out of paper. paper. Sure, a bit more expensive, but it will be more eco-friendly than styrofoam. Would you rather save a buck or save the earth? 
It doesn't use plastic materials. I'll take less years to break it down and stir than styrofoam. Styrofoam, on the other hand, is not clean and recyclable. Even though styrofoam is cheaper, it's not recyclable. This is a brass with the amount of material that you as you can see, paper is 96% recyclable. Styrofoam is only 4%. You can clearly see that paper is a more eco-friendly choice. Here is our evidence that it would be really effective. Everyone loves to go to fast food restaurants in origin. This means when you finish the drink, the cup can be recycled at your house or at your restaurant. And two, it will take less time to break down and become dirt. Putting paper into action. We will schedule a meeting with the food manager to try to convince them to switch the paper cups. And if we give them a free one, they may just do that. And in return, our rest will be this. In conclusion, we believe that paper is the best material for cups. We hope you decide to support this fantastic idea by the help make Grand Rock an even better place. Thank you for watching our, our PowerPoint, and we are open to answer any questions and comments. Remember to replace those styrofoam coffee cups with paper because we are we can be able to change the world one cup at a time. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um. What about the rechanging of the heat? The styrofoam cups keep the coffee warm. Uh, would the paper cups do that? Because, you know, have yes. a They do pretty good with that, actually. Mm -hmm. Not as well as styrofoam, but they're still really good at insulating. Yeah. So this is a great presentation. Thank you. We have a third group. You guys want to come up? Hi, you're the Raymore player. Here are the people in our group. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm Dylan. I'm Nickel. And I'm Alvin. We have a Raymore. Like a presentation. Hi, we are the Rainwater Group, and we chose this topic because we are concerned that rainwater in Round Rock is going to waste. When it rains, we are wasting valuable rainwater by letting it run off into sewers and roads. If you collect rainwater and you use it for other purposes, like watering our grass, we will be reusing one of um, our Earth's most precious natural resources. Our plan is to use a plastic bucket with a drain connected to the sprinkler system. Neighbors and community members will be able to use these rainwater buckets in their own backyards. The bucket would cost about from $50 to $150. This would add the cost of piping, which would be $100, plus the cost of insulation. Though this would be costly, the city of Round Rock could offer tax breaks or credits to the city's water bills. Defending our plan. Number one, it will save people money in the long run. Number two, it is better for our earth. Number three, it will reuse and conserve our nutrient-rich rainwater. When we will get the word out to local Round Rock schools that can and should to come to the top. We do hope we can make this happen. Oh, background information. Did you know that it brings an average of 32.6 inches a year in our job? Also, did you know that on average, each sprinkler zone uses approximately 15 gallons of water per minute? That's a lot of water. We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Together, we can make our rock an even better place to live. Thank you for watching. We will be happy to answer any questions. I, oh, go ahead. The, the city of Austin has a water conservation department. Do 
did you maybe contact them when you were doing research for this project funded that they already have a similar um, credit or, or a program in place? We will. We were thinking of doing that later on. Also, we don't need, like, we've been searching on the web to see if there's anything like that out there right now. And when we look, there is no results. So we think that there is no other, um, like, what do you call it? Like, water, cons water conservation sprinkler system? No other water. Rainwater Got it. <laughs> so your solution is a little bit different than what else is out yeah. it, there. And the I'm pretty sure Austin does have rainwater buckets that yeah. you can yeah, get. Yeah, but that's just not yeah. to But it doesn't have like the drain in the middle that goes to the through systems. That was more or less my question. Okay. Did you look at other people that did the same thing? Yeah, we did. energy too fast. We have an, an excellent way to serve the amount of energy we use, we, the amount of lighting we use in the run Our solution. We want to use solar panels that absorb the light energy of the day and use it at night. We are also thinking of a light dimmer to dim the lights in the store at night and during the day. During the night, the dimmers will do their job. We don't want all the lights on at night on full blast. However, we don't want the store's pitch black for security reasons. We also thought of light timers. It will turn on and off the lights on a certain time. But of course, you want an extra 30 minutes to close them. What we were thinking of. Here are solar powered lights and light timers. Light givers. Light givers. A light giver is a little gadget that can save you while sun. Used to utilize and control wattage energy. Our plan to conserve. Here are two reasons why our plan will be effective. It might be expensive at first, but in the long run, it will save energy and create a profit for the store. Most importantly, it will help us to conserve valuable energy for generations to come. <laughs> About CFL goals. CFL stands for compact, compact fluorescent lamp. A compact, a compact fluorescent lamp is a smaller version of the fluorescent lamp that have been used to provide energy, efficient light for offices, factories, stores, and schools for over 60 years. A CFO will save 75% of energy compared to a regular fluorescent bulb and CFL bulbs. And CFL bulbs last 10 times longer. Imagine if every house in Maranthoff would replace even just one regular bulb with a CFL bulb. Think of how much energy we could conserve. Um, well, here, here's the chart, CFL versus incandescent bulb. You can see here's the difference between, between the wattages that you use in incandescent bulbs, CFL bulbs, and the estimate of savings of CFL bulbs. A simple way of what a lumen is, is a way to measure light. The energy blues. The energy blues will tell you a little bit about how we need to start conserving our energy. <coughs> I've got the idea. Get ready for the best kids' bus ever! Hey, it's Kids Bus 25! We sell today's hottest song, so buy kids, more kids! And we can! Kids Bus 25! Oh, 
Have you, um, did, when you were doing your research, did you see of any other cities that might have done similar type projects? Oh, okay. Or some other place where this was being used as an example, like maybe with contractors? Or uh, we saw on the website, I'm not sure which one, but we've, uh, it said that some people were using, um, were smashing up the porcelain and putting them in the concrete for sidewalks and sometimes even roads. And we thought that that was a pretty good idea and it would like help and save money for the uh, concrete. Subtract Styrofoam by Tyler, Connor, Ethan, and Israel. And we are here today to, ex to explain a solution to a rising problem in the Roanoke okay. area. Subtract Styrofoam. Did you know that one Styrofoam cup contains 1 billion CFC molecules, plus the chemical compounds that depletes the ozone? Once a CFC molecule reaches the ozone layer, it can take over 100 years before it breaks up and becomes compost. What is styrofoam made out of? Styrofoam is made out of polystyrene. Polystyrene is made out of a petroleum-based plastic. Petroleum is oil, and oil is not a renewable resource. This is why polystyrene is not the best choice for drinking cups. I already use styrofoam. Companies use styrofoam because it is very cheap. However, it is not good for the environment. The problem. The problem is that styrofoam is being used too much. We need to find a new solution. Our solution. A good solution for this problem is to replace styrofoam cups with eco-friendly cups. These eco-friendly cups will be made from plants. Now we're going to put this in action. We are going to put this in action by putting a design on the cup. We can put a bright background in, in a picture of a plant. This type of advertisement will, will attract customers. Do you, don't you want a don't you want a drinking cup that is bright and colorful and good for the environment? Why should eco-friendly cups be used? Although it costs more, it's good for the environment. It pollutes the air less. Doesn't it? It doesn't doesn't fill up the landfills as much. Here's some fun facts. Eco-friendly cups are made out of plants. Number two, they are good for the environment. Number three, regular star regular styrofoam is made out of polystyrene. Number four. Regular styrofoam is not recyclable. We've created a Venn diagram to compare the two. Regular styrofoam is not recyclable. Eco-friendly cups are recyclable. Styrofoam is not good for the environment, but eco-friendly cups are. Regular styrofoam is made out of uh, polystyrene. Eco-friendly cups are made from plants. They're both good insulators and both good cut materials. Conclusion. We hope you consider our idea of replacing styrofoam cups with, with eco-friendly cups. Thank you. We are open to any questions or comments. Thank you for watching. So, quick question, guys. When you're talking about the eco-friendly cups, or did you find something else besides the paper cups some of the other groups talked about? Or were you also thinking about paper or were you really not worried about what kind of cup it was as long as it wasn't? We, we did think about paper actually. So these are these are this is a different solution. Yeah, we thought about papers. We thought like souvenir cups and uh, cardboard cups without wax on them. Okay, because the wax makes them not recyclable, right? So, but so this one's best. something different than the paper. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you.
I don't think so. I think you guys did a great job of researching the topics. Um, it's really hard to look at stuff on the web like that, but it is a good source of information. Um, you just have to be, I guess, careful that you make sure to look at a lot of different sources instead of just focusing on one, but it looks like most of you guys did that and at least found a couple of different sources, which is good. Thank you.